Hello. Today I thought I'd like to talk about astigmatism. What do I know about astigmatism? Well, it's a condition of your eyes. They call it a condition which implies that it's permanent, whereas in fact I've demonstrated to my own satisfaction that it can be changed. The angle of astigmatism can be changed and if you play around you can also get it to disappear by being very relaxed, by using your imagination, closing your eyes, imagining movement on the astigmatism chart. So rather than a condition, I don't know, I would call it a state. It's a state of your eyes, a non-permanent state. And what it is, is normally a state of the transparent bit on the outside, the cornea. Apparently you can also get astigmatism caused by distortions of the lens, but I don't know anything about that and usually it's the cornea. If you imagine your eyeball is a ball, instead of being like an English football, all nice and round and curvy, it's like an American football. It's kind of squashed. And what this does optically is it distorts the light coming through and commonly you would get a blurring or a, a doubling of the image that you see but you wouldn't get it in all planes you'd only get it in one plane so you might if you look at a black line in that angle it might look perfectly clear and black and if you look at a black line at that angle it looks kind of fuzzy so what can you do about it well, you can go to the optician, you can get glasses, you can get the um, angular correction for the astigmatism. What this does, in my view, is it fixes what is only a state, a temporary state, into a permanent condition. Because once you've got it fixed into your glasses, you have to maintain that specific state of your eyes in order to see clearly through the glasses. Whereas I think Normally with astigmatism, what it will do is it will fluctuate, it will come and go. Your eyeball's a little bit flexible. Your eyeball is surrounded by the three sets of extra ocular muscles that will inevitably sort of squish it around a bit in different directions. Now, if you stay relaxed, if you keep these muscles mobile and moving and you're not staring and making one set of muscles work harder than another, you won't get permanent distortions. There'll be distortions, but they'll be temporary. And this is the Batesy way to go, and I think it's actually preferable to going down the route of either wearing glasses or even worse, having surgery, because if you have surgery, they sort of shave a bit off the outside of your cornea, or they, s they slice off a flap, shave a bit off, and then stick the flap back down. This is permanent. This, this, this still fixes you with this distortion in the shape of your eyeball. And the natural shape of a ball that's filled with fluid under slight pressure is surely to be round. It's surely not to have permanent distortions. So what's the Batesy thing to do about your astigmatism? First of all, you might want to check out for yourself how you experience it. Draw or make or download and print or buy for yourself an astigmatism test chart. And this will have lines at different angles from horizontal down to vertical and then up again to horizontal. So all the different angles can be tested for. So one eye at a time because normally the astigmatism level in each eye and the, the angle will be different. So you shade one eye and you have a look at this, preferably without your glasses on. So what you've got to do is you've got to find a distance where it's clear. If it's not clear, then you're not going to be able to notice the astigmatism. And if you've got only a very narrow range of clarity, you have to go within that. But if you've got a broader range, then you can try what it's like at the close distance and what it's like at the far distance. And you might find that the angle changes. And what you'll see is that Maybe this line is the blackest, this line and this line. And then you come down here and they get gradually more and more blurred until these ones are really blurred. Or you might find that these lines are the blackest, or these lines. Wherever it is, what you're looking for is a variation in 
the blackness and sharpness of the lines. So then you shade the other eye and do exactly the same thing again and record your results because how will you know it changes if you don't record them today and try again tomorrow and compare the results. You look at it, you get an impression of it, you close your eyes, let them be all nice and soft and rested, all relaxed. And remember what you saw. I saw a wheel of spokes like this all round and at this particular angle they were black. Okay, have another look. Is it the same? Yeah. Relax, relax, relax. What did I see? The first time I saw it and these lines were blackest and these were not so black. And the second time, yeah, it was about the same. Soft, soft, soft. Remember to breathe. Have another look. Blink as you look. Yeah, the same. Okay. Well, it might change, or it might stay the same. The other thing you can try is to bring in your imagination. So, close your eyes again. Let them be all soft, soft and cobwebby. If necessary, do some palming. You can make your palms warm. Cup your palms and rest your eyeballs inside these dark, soft, warm caves. Now, while your eyes are closed, use your imagination. Think about the chart you were looking at and imagine what it would be like if all the spokes were equally black. Maybe you could draw them in your imagination. So these lines were really black. So let me take some of this blackness and pick it up and paint it onto this one and make this one just as black as that one. And this one as well, just as black as that one. Soft, soft, soft. Then have a look. Does it look any different? Oh, momentarily it looked different. Okay, close your eyes. Soft, soft, soft. So the first time, the first few times I saw it, it was all the same. That angle was blackest and they were not so black. Then I imagined that these lines were blacker and when I looked, they actually were blacker. They were not totally the same, but they were almost as black as those ones. Something like that. So what you're doing is you're closing your eyes continually, resting them. It's really important to do a lot of resting of your eyes because these extraocular muscles that are moving your eyes around are working against each other and they have to work completely evenly. If there's any tension in any of them, they are going to make you astigmatic. And so they need rest with palming, closing eyes, focusing, if you can, on feelings of softness around the eyes, feelings of softness and of letting go, of floating. Just don't try and make the eyes do anything at all. Take your attention into the back of your head if you take the attention into the back of your head, do you still feel something going on in your eyes? You don't need to. They're not doing anything. Take your attention to the space between your ears. If you took your attention to the space between your ears, how would that be? If you imagined that your ears were outside the walls of the room, how would that be? So you're just playing with silly ideas to take your attention away from these things and the muscles. And that way you give yourself, you give your eyes the space to actually relax and regroup and find a new way to be.